massive announcement. This month I'm back to daily upload, so one video every day, 30 videos for the entirety of September. So come back and check every day. Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today we are here back again because of your curiosity. Every time we read and study the ancient Romans, particularly in their military efforts, we always think and talk about ancient Roman roads. They built so many, in so many places, in fact, throughout multiple continents. And what's crazy is that not only their engineers could come up with solutions in order to produce roads that are still working today, <laughs> today, <laughs> millennia, Mille could you imagine putting that one on your CV? Yeah, I've only produced like 16 roads, not 20 like the other guy, but mine <laughs> stand, they're still standing up there. I'm gonna last for thousands of years, thank you very much. But also another thing that makes it fascinating is how they do it. Like oftentimes when we think of road building, we imagine civilians, right? You got like bricklayers, construction workers and all that kind of stuff that are building the roads. But for the Romans, oftentimes roads and bridges were built by the military. How about we dive into it? All right, so let's begin with one of the most famous and important ancient Roman roads ever built. In fact, I want to remove myself. What you see here in front of you is the Appian Way, which was the first of the great Roman roads in Italian via Appia. It was begun by the censor Appius Claudius in 312 BC, hence the name, and originally ran southeast from Rome, 162 miles, 261 kilometers, to the city of Tarentum, and it ended up connecting Rome to Capua. The ancient Roman road system stands as one of humanity's most remarkable engineering accomplishments, showcasing advanced construction techniques, strategic vision and extraordinary longevity. The first thing we have to consider is the fact that Roman road construction commenced with sophisticated planning processes, and very much of the building philosophy was focused on quality construction practices. Road construction often started from two simultaneous opposing points that eventually joined in the middle. Today, the concrete has worn from the spaces around the stones giving the impression of a very bumpy road, but the original practice was to produce a surface that was no doubt much closer to being flat. But really the first thing that I find to be impressive is its scale. I mean, look at this map. This was done in classical antiquity. <laughs> Just take a moment to think about that. They had no cars, no engines, no mechanical devices. Well, they did, but not in the modern sense, and yet, Behold! Indeed, the massive network scale and the total infrastructure is the first and possibly most impressive aspect of this. The Roman road system represented an unprecedented transportation network. The entirety of it comprised more than 400,000 kilometers or 250,000 miles of roads, of which over 80,500 kilometers or 50,000 miles were stone paved. In total, the Romans built an estimated 53,000 miles of roads throughout their vast empire, about 11,000 more miles than the United States had of interstate highways in 1995. Uh, this, for instance, is a uh, picture of a section of Via delle Gallie in the region of Valle d'Aosta in Italy. Note that no physical barrier would stop them. This road was excavated by cutting down sections of the mountain in order to provide enough space. Yeah. Oh, a mountain? Not a problem, sire. I mean, they wouldn't say sire. Caesar. Julius Caesar. Legatus. Legate, actually. Don't be a modern muppet and conjugate properly. I know I keep coming back to this picture, but literally we need to talk more about the continental coverage. Roman road system was an outstanding transportation network of the ancient Mediterranean world because it extended from Britain to the Tigris and Euphrates river system and from the Danube river to Spain and northern Africa. During its zenith under the reign of Septimius Severus in 211 AD, the mighty Roman Empire stretched over much of Europe, from the Atlantic to the Ural Mountains and from modern-day Scotland to the Sahara of the Arabian Gulf. Picture that. Now, of course, in this video, I'm going to tell you how they did it, how they built these physically, these roads, what the differences would be between modern roads and ancient or classical antiquity roads that we see. But I first want to focus on one thing, the construction timeline and most importantly, workforce. 
deployment. Generally, a Roman road could take several months to a few years to complete. For instance, a straight road over a relatively flat landscape could be constructed in less time, sometimes within a year. However, in challenging terrains with obstacles like rivers or mountains, road construction could extend for several years. However, as mentioned, we have to consider military engineering cores, which clearly speed up the process. Generally, the labor of constructing the road was carried out by the army. There were many engineers in the ancient Roman army, and their knowledge of roads, bridges, aqueducts, and fort constructions were vital in the building and production of the roads. Like most major Roman fortifications and public works, Roman roads were primarily built by the legionaries, the legions themselves, as they expanded their territories, areas of dominion, and pacified external areas. All right, that's great. How do they make them? Take a look at the following picture. What you see here is what would be considered advanced stratified construction. Roman engineers developed a sophisticated multi-layer approach that provided unmatched stability and longevity. What? You thought they just put a bunch of stones on top of the whatever the heck soil and called it a day? <laughs> this is Rome. We are talking about this is Rome. First of all, let's talk about the base layer. The first layer was a base of large stones or rubble, usually around 20 centimeters thick, which provided a solid foundation. So they had to dig in order to get to the depth needed in order to create this solid foundation. The base layer in Latin is called statumen. Then we have the secondary layer called rudus. Above the foundation was a layer of smaller stones and mortar, approximately 25 centimeters thick. The use of mortar was essential in binding the materials and providing a robust underlayer. Then we go into the intermediate layer called nucleus. This was a layer of fine gravel or crushed stones which formed a solid yet smoother surface. This layer was usually around 20 centimeters thick. The fourth layer is called surface layer or pavimentum. This is a layer of polygonal stone slabs fitted closely together to form a durable surface. The stones were often cut to create a cambered shape, allowing water to drain off easily to the sides. The most prestigious roads had a top surface of dressed stone blocks, cobbles or slabs of volcanic tuff, limestone or basalt. Another interesting fan fact is that the Romans continuously innovated their engineering elements of road construction. The road was first built straight, it was not built flat. A design aspect of the road was that it had an arc with a dual slope. What this looked like was that the highest point was at the center and from there the pavement slopes downwards to the sides. This ground design channeled water away from the roadbed preventing saturation and frost damage. Literally if they told me like think about what one word for the Romans I would say plan ahead. That's two words. The reason why we know how this was made is not just by sort of reverse engineering them or studying and analyzing material goods and evidence, but it's also because of a set of tablets called the Laws of the Twelve Tablets, dated about 450 BC, which required that any public road, in Latin via, be eight Roman feet, perhaps about 2.37 meters wide, and it needed to be straight and twice that width when curved. Roman roads varied in thickness, but the typical road was around 3 to 5 feet, so 1 to 1.5 meters thick. Hey look, I found another amazing map of all the roads. I don't know why, but this is my favorite thing. <laughs> Just the maps. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Now let's talk about the next impressive element, longevity and of course maintenance. When you look at an ancient Roman road, really the first thing that strikes the mind is its conditions, considering these are millennia old. So the exceptional longevity factors is going to be the next focus of this investigation. You see, Roman roads were notable for their straightness, solid foundations, cambered surfaces, facilitating drainage, and all of the things we mentioned. And some of this was also due to the type of materials used, such as volcanic ash and lime. And it was precisely the incorporation of volcanic materials that provided hydraulic properties that strengthened over time. In other words, the engineering philosophy was that these roads were built to last. Maybe something we can learn from. 
Roman roads were already built with the concept of trying to need as little repair as possible in mind. They were building roads that would not need frequent repair and therefore this became their main goal. The structural resilience of Roman roads can be explained the following way. Of course Roman roads varied, some were simpler, but main roads were using deep roadbeds of tamped rubble as an underlying layer to ensure that they kept dry as the water would flow out between the stones and fragments of rubble instead of becoming mud in clay soils. Therefore, the Romans adapted the construction of the roads depending on the type of territory, soil and environmental characteristics, plus also keeping typical weather conditions and climate in mind. It was the layered system that distributed loads effectively while maintaining drainage integrity. So, a two-in-one, if you will. Another interesting aspect is the travel efficiency. Horse-drawn carts could travel up to 40 to 50 kilometers, so 25 to 31 miles per day, while pedestrians traveled 20 to 25 kilometers, so 12 to 16 miles per day. And all of this was by achieving the best, most straight and easiest path possible, while also being the safest. And mind you, not only safest in the sense that this is going to be an area where everybody is going to travel and so you know that it's less likely that you're going to be attacked because you're in the middle of everything, uh, but another reason is that you're not going to get lost. Because you remember that, it's not like these people had GPS, given there were maps, but if you're just a regular person, you might not be able to afford one. And oftentimes a lot of this was built and the ability to travel in the classical period and in the Middle Ages was based on memory and personal experience. But this way, the state would ensure that they would do that for you and all you need to do is just follow the roads and they will lead you to wherever you needed to go without having to cross forests or without having to risking to end up in an area that might not even be under the control of the Republic or the Empire with all its consequential dangers. To give you an example, in 9 BC, using these roads, the future emperor Tiberius was able to travel almost 350,000 kilometers or 217.48 miles in 24 hours to be by the side of his dying brother, Drusus. While that's amazing, I do not envy the troops that had to march at that speed, because do remember, the emperor, yeah, it's amazing, but the emperor is on horseback. So, I mean, a little easier, right? Poor heavy infantry. Well, technically not poor, they're always well paid. What we can say really is that the Roman network epitomizes ancient engineering excellence. The result? A transportation infrastructure that surpassed anything built for the next thousand years. And with that, thank you very much for your curiosity. Keep asking those questions and I'll keep delivering the videos. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Glory to Rome.